Magic the Gathering Arena is the new free-to-play digital game from Wizards of the Coast. While tons of games advertise as being free-to-play but really are pay-to-win, Magic Arena really is free-to-play. If you don't think you have the time to dedicate grinding cards, if you just can't be bothered, if it seems overwhelming to you, this is where you want to be. In this video, I'm going to tech for you the best deck you can make as soon as you finish the new player experience on Magic the Gathering Arena, basically playing for five days. No weeks of grinding. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do, remember to hit that like button, helps out a lot. In addition to providing you with a plethora of introductory decks to play with, Magic Arena also gives you a limited number of wild cards. You can redeem these cards for copies of Magic cards you don't have in your inventory. It's a one-to-one -one system. When you sign up for an account, Wizards gives you one mythic wild card, two rare wild cards, four uncommon wild cards, and eight common wild cards. Using these provided wild cards and the already existing pool of cards they give you, I'm going to build the absolute best deck 100% hassle-free and legitimately good. We're going to start with the blue-green merfolk shell Wizards provides called Jungle Secrets. We start off by seeing a lot of what we'd expect from a standard merfolk deck. Low to the ground creatures in Kumaina's Speaker and Jade Bearer. Nice merfolk tribal cards in Silvergill Adept and merfolk Mistbinder. Some disruption in the form of Sleep and Disperse. For an introductory deck, this isn't half bad, but thanks to the 15 total wild cards we have to work with, we're going to make this deck crazy. We'll begin with the bottom of our curve. Three Jade Bearer and three Kumaina Speaker are both correct. Both are solid in this deck. Jade Bearer isn't all that flashy, but it will bring two power and toughness for one man a lot of the time, and that works for us. We're all about being aggressive. Kumaina Speaker is strike ass. Almost always at least a 2-2 on turn 2 when you attack in for the first time. It starts the clock on the opponent quickly and absorbs early removal spells as our opponents begin to panic. Remember, we have 8 common wild cards to work with and we're going to use 4 of those for Miscloaked Herald. Jade Bearer isn't going to be the only merfolk we have that pumps up our other merfolk. Part of this deck's power is its ability to get through the enemy's ground forces. Herald is a great addition to this strategy because it doesn't need that help. It's practically guaranteed damage, comes down super early, isn't a huge investment. That's what we're looking for. Lean, mean, fighting fish machines. Our two drops are the heart of this deck. Three Silvergill Adept were provided in the intro deck, and wow, is this a gift. This card's nuts. There's a reason it's played in modern and legacy merfolk. Silvergill Adept is drawing a card for you on turn two at least 90% of the time, not even kidding. After playing hundreds of games, I can count on one hand the amount of times the Adept couldn't come down on turn two and replace itself. It's amazing. Three is a great number for this. We're only given two rare wild cards to work with, and I am positive that Deep Root Elite is the best place for them. The deck comes with one, but it isn't enough. Deep Root Elite gives this deck reach that it wouldn't normally have. It forces the opponent to answer it quickly, and if they can't, you just win the game. Outrageously powerful card, that's why the deck runs three of them, and yes, using both rare wild cards for them, totally worth it, cards disgusting. Merfolk Miss Binder is one of the cornerstones of the strategy and oftentimes puts you ahead multiple turns over your opponent. By playing this card, even with only a few creatures on the battlefield, you accelerate your clock to a crazy degree. Turn 1 Speaker into Turn 2 Miss Binder is 3 damage on turn 2, which isn't something easily achieved in the standard format. Another card that demands an answer right away. Now, Wizards was nice enough to give us 3 copies of the Miss Binder, but we're definitely going to use an uncommon wild card for that fourth copy. It's way too important not to include the full playset, make sure this is the first wild card you use incredibly strong. River Sneak is probably one of the more underrated cards in this deck and we have other spells to synergize with it, but even on its own in a merfolk strategy it performs perfectly fine. It's unblockable, which means we're getting more guaranteed damage, and it pumps itself whenever another merfolk enters the battlefield under our control. For 2 mana, I will take this all day. The pre-con deck comes with 2 of them and that'll do just fine for now. Water Trap Weaver is a 3-drop that flies under the radar for this strategy. I'm glad that 3 are included in the provided deck, because otherwise we might have to redeem some wild cards for them. The Weaver isn't exciting, it isn't flashy, but it adds some much needed tempo power to the strategy. The deck isn't as fast as Mono Red or some other tribal strategies, so we have to make up for that with Tempo Swingers, and the Weaver is going to prevent attacks and blocks for at least a turn. Cards like Merfolk Mistbinder become even more powerful with Weaver in the same deck. That blanket power buff is going to hurt even more when your opponent doesn't have any blockers available, or attackers the next turn, or blockers the turn after that. It's so strong and just a common, worth the inclusion for us. Three copies, perfect. 
We have a single mythic wild card to spend, and I can't think of a better place to spend it than here. Kumena, Tyrant of Araska is provided as a one of, but adding a second copy impacts the deck a lot. One of mythics generally aren't that impactful in strategies like this because you don't draw them enough, but a couple copies of Kumena means that we're going to draw it a bunch, and wow is it good! Kumena is relatively large as a 2-4, is unblockable pretty much whenever you want, and can draw you cards if you're in a board stall position. As far as mythic rares go for this Merfolk deck, there's really no other target to consider instant wildcard redemption right here. Now, due to the wildcard constraints, we have a number of one-of creatures in the deck, but each of them is powerful in its own right. Deep Root Champion is actually quite bad in the default strategy based on the non-creatures in that deck, but in this upgraded version, it is much better as you'll soon see. So keep it in mind as we move towards our non-creatures. Jade Light Ranger is a nice filler merfolk, double exploring, fixing the top of our deck as we see fit, getting some counters along the way, and triggering our other merfolk as well as benefiting from them. At this point, even just having the merfolk creature type has value, so something like this ranger that also comes with card advantage is pretty nice. Seafloor Oracle is a one of in this deck, and I'll admit that it's a bit of a guilty pleasure. We'll talk about even more upgrades at the end of the video, and that's where this card will be replaced. But for the free upgraded version of this deck, Oracle is a solid one of at the top of the creature curve. It can be a bit of a win more, but with so many unblockable creatures, the ability isn't that difficult to trigger. As a matter of fact, with the addition of a place of miscloaked herald, the oracle gets a fair bit better. Again, in the fully upgraded version of the deck, it's probably left out, but it's a neat payoff card in this version. The last one of and the last creature in the deck is Tempest Caller. Don't let the fact that it's a one of scare you off. Tempest Caller wins so many games. The problem is you really don't want too many, especially early game. In board stall situations, Tempest Caller is a win condition all its own, tapping down everything you care about, total brutality. If your opponent doesn't have a counter spell, the game's probably over. It's a nice one of. The deck has 31 creatures, but arguably the non-creatures are just as important as far as Jungle Secrets, the introductory Merfolk deck is concerned, the non-creatures leave a lot to be desired, and that's why most of our wild cards are focused here. Three Disperse are okay, they aren't great, but aren't terrible. Losing Unsummon to Rotation hurt a bit, but there's no reason to keep Disperse over Blink of an Eye, a card we don't even have to spend wild cards for. A pair of Blink of an Eye are included in the provided Izzet deck on Arena, so we save a few wild cards there, very nice. Blink of an Eye does everything we need an unsummon to do, messes with tempo, removes blockers, just gets in the opponent's way, and sometimes even draws cards. That kicker? Quite nice late game when we need more gas. Alright, we've got Miss Cloaked Herald, River Sneak, and Kumena. We're obviously going to run Curious Obsession. Brought to true prominence thanks to Mono Blue Tempo, Curious Obsession is a card advantage machine, and the fact that we can put it on a Miss Cloaked Herald turn two, it's disgusting, it's absolutely disgusting. This card's insane. Considering the deck we're running, appeasing the must attack clause is also really easy thanks to cards like Water Trap Weaver and Tempest Caller. Think about it. One of the weaknesses of a tribal deck is usually card advantage, being able to draw enough cards to continue pressuring the opponent even after they interact with you. Curious Obsession is an ultimate reward for playing a blue tribal deck incredibly strong, and that's why we're using a whopping three uncommon wild cards on it, way too strong not to include. Since Curious Obsession is such a stellar card, just like Mono Blue Tempo, we need to protect the creature that it's enchanted on, or we're gonna get two for one all day long. We're running a pair of Dive Down and a pair of Spell Peers. Both of these cards are incredibly cheap, so they aren't a burden on our mana. Dive Down not only fizzles targeted spells, but has dual functionality as a combat trick to help keep our Merfolk alive, plus zero plus three isn't nothing. And then Spell Pierce is a pretty nice catch-all early game against targeted removal, because let's be honest, as soon as we drop Curious Obsession, that creature is now the most hated creature in the history of Magic the Gathering. Spell Pierce really is the best game when answer we have to everything we hate. From Shock and Settle the Wreckage, all the way to Conclave Tribunal and Vraska's Contempt. Spell Pierce is pretty dang versatile, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Normally, no one pays much attention to the land base, but wow, does this pre-con deck run way too many lands. To be fair, we did lower the curve a lot by removing the likes of Jungleborn Pioneer, Sleep, and Herald of Secret Streams for the Miscloaked Herald, Curious Obsession, Dive Down, and more. But still, 25 lands is outrageous. We're cutting all the woodland streams. That card is bad in this deck. We literally cannot afford to have lands under the battlefield tapped ever. Once the next set comes out and Breeding Pool is back in standard, Merfolk players are going to have a party, but until that day, the one Hinterland Harbor the deck provides will have to do. 
We also swapped two forests for two islands as the deck has taken a more blue heavy focus with our upgrades. 21 lands in total, much better than the suggested number. 21 is actually more than enough. Don't let it intimidate you. You 100% do not need more than 21 lands. Maybe even 20 is fine. Trust me, you're good to go here. To recap, this deck uses all the wild cards we have available to us when you first launch Arena. Our one mythic wild card becomes the Kumena Tyrant of Araska. Our two rare wild cards both become Deep Root Elite. One of our uncommon wild cards becomes a Merfolk Mistbinder. The other three turn into Curious Obsession. Then our eight common wild cards are split up between four Miscloaked Herald, two Dive Down, and two Spell Pierce. In addition to these wild cards, two Blink of an Eye are in the deck and are included via other pre-con decks you receive in Arena. You can make the entire list for basically no real-time investment at all and literally no financial investment, and I gotta say the deck's crazy strong. It attacks out of the gate really quickly and is difficult to keep down as refueling is a bit easier than many would think. Make sure to keep up mana for dive down and spell pierce when you have something important on the battlefield or you're against a deck that you know uses a heavy amount of removal. The worst thing that can happen is getting your turn to Herald removed when it has an obsession on it. Prioritize that insurance. Other than that, the deck is pretty easy to pilot. And again, 100% free on Arena with legit no financial investment at all. Now this deck is designed for regular constructed play on Magic Arena, which means best of one games. If you want to build a sideboard, I have some suggestions, but they will not be 100% free like the deck itself. There are a number of creature-based decks in the format right now, which means that there will be games that end up in board stalls. It happens. The Immortal Sun is a great way to either win the game by smashing your opponent or getting them to forfeit because you have way more card advantage than them, and your creatures are bigger. Also, a small note, the Sun is a huge play against any deck with Vraska, Karn, or Teferi. It's so good. Tempest Caller is a great board breaker and worth additional sideboard slots. Against control decks or really any decks at all running targeted removal, I cannot talk up Kapala enough. What a huge bomb against those strategies, effectively taxing them into oblivion to cast any removal. Kapala wins you the game by setting your opponents back turns at a time. And when they finally can target something you have, dive down, spell pierce, negate, which you're also bringing in from the sideboard. You are going to be a nightmare for targeted removal. Enjoy. Is it Phoenix is coming out of nowhere, the Arclight Phoenix deck that focuses on bringing back the bird from the graveyard. Good thing Mist Color exists. No one seems to remember this card, but wow, does it just end games. Takes their primary win condition right out from under them, forces them to deal with the caller before trying to win. It's so good. Now I like Sentinel Totem against any kind of graveyard nonsense. There are some self-mill strategies running around, some undergrowth, plenty of targets. With all of these cards, you should be prepared for a plethora of strategies, whether you're playing online or in paper. Speaking of paper, if we're looking at a paper deck without the self-imposed restrictions, your deck is going to look relatively similar, but with some small additions. Deep Root Waters is great, synergizing with Deep Root Elite, River Sneak, and Kamena. Merfolk Branch Walker becomes a 3 of instantly. In addition to the powerful explorer mechanic, it will come down with counters on it more often than not. And finally, we're moving to an even lower curve, cutting more lands down to 19, since this version of the deck eliminates everything that costs more than 3 mana. An even leaner fish onslaught, but with plenty of resilience and power. You can see the link to this budget paper Merfolk deck in the description below. It'll cost you less than $50, and again, pretty dang competitive. Blue-Green Merfolk is a powerful strategy that has been overlooked since the release of Guilds of Ravnica, but with Curious Obsession back at the forefront of the format, and plenty of powerful Merfolk ready to be deployed, this tribal deck has everything it needs to be a decent contender, whether you're playing in paper or on Magic Arena. I'd love to hear what you think about the deck in the comments, so please be sure to share your thoughts and we'll talk about it, and as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time! This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Blue Green Merfolk is a real fun deck that can absolutely win you matches at FNM. The mixture of Merfolk and Mono Blue Tempo is the bomb. If you want in, you're going to need Curious Obsession, one of the all-stars of the strategy. Right now, you can get copies of the Bomb Enchant Creature Aura on TCG Player for $3.25. That may seem like a lot, but the card's everywhere, and it's an uncommon from a small set. If you plan on playing any blue tempo deck for the next year, I got you back. Just click the link on the screen. Helps the channel win, win, enjoy.